Yo, my name is Tiki Davis. I go by the Tiki Factor. You know, basically I just have one of those overcoming stories, never giving up, no excuses, and I just keep working hard. And I think if you work hard and, you know, you can overcome anything. And I share some stages with some of the legendary speakers in the game. And right now I carved out a niche for myself. So that's pretty much it. You know. Yeah, where you coming from? Where, where, where you coming in from, T? I'm coming in from <laughs> Texas, Odessa, Texas, a little small town outside of Dallas, in between El Paso and Dallas. That's where I live, in Odessa, Texas, in Done oil deal. country. Done mm. deal. So, so, so you're going to bring us some down south heat today? Yeah, I'm just going to try to hit you with one of my principles today because I know we don't have much time, and sometimes speakers can get long-winded, so I don't have, I'm not going to go too long. I'm just going to say a few things that hopefully to motivate the crowd. Let's do it, brother. Floor is yours. You got the mic. All right. Let, let's talk about one of my acronyms in, in, in my, in my uh, Tiki Factor. It's called Total Commitment. I want to talk about Total Commitment tonight. What are you totally committed to? That's just simple. If you're an educator, are you totally committed to being an educator? If you're an athlete, are you totally committed to being an athlete? What I'm talking about is that uncomfortable feeling that's in your chest that don't feel right when you don't give maximum effort. That, that when, you, when you lose or you win, it's all about what commitment did you give. I want to talk to you about this story, this lady that I first showed me commitment. It was my mother. She had three jobs in her life. Her first job, she worked at Burger King. And it was career day at my school. Mama showed up with a Burger King outfit on. And a lot of kids was kind of laughing at my mom, but I was proud because she showed up. She was sweating because she had to walk to the school. But when she got her paycheck, it was just enough to still be poor. After she paid her few bills, she was still poor. The next job she had, she was orderly, working at people's house, watching old people making sure they eat, making sure they take their medicine, making sure they take a bath. But when she got paid, it was just enough to be poor. So my mom would go back and rob them people because she felt like she wasn't getting what she deserved. How many of you working at a job and you feel like you're not getting what you deserve? So she had to steal. The next job she had, she worked for the Salvation Army ringing the bell outside of your Kmart, your Walmart, your HEB, your grocery store. And when she got paid, it was enough to just be poor. So now I want to challenge you. You hear speakers throw this around all the time. What's your mindset? Do you have a poor mindset? Or do you have a wealthy mindset? It all starts with you standing in your lane. A lot of people want to jump into other people's lane to have success. But if you stay focused and stay in your lane with your mindset, you're going to have some success. I can't do what Sean do. I can't do what ET do, but I can do what I do because I'm being committed to what I do. My asphalt is a certain way. What about your asphalt in your lane? You can't step on nobody's toes if you're in your own lane. So my mom, even though she had a poor mindset, she was totally committed to the job she had. So me watching my mother grow up and taking those jobs, I said, man, I got to have a mindset be, be, being committed to something different than she was. So I worked harder. I went to college. I got a degree. I went to college. I got my second degree. But my dream was to be a professional athlete. But then life happened. So now I had to switch that dream. I have to pivot and prevail. So what do I mean by that? Say, for instance, you're going up and making a shooting a shot and you miss. And you just let the ball roll out. So you, you're missing up your opportunity. So when I shot for that goal of going to the NFL, I missed that shot. But I got my ball. I got my rebound. And I tried to lay it back up. No matter how many times I missed, no matter how many times I missed, I kept on trying to make that layup. Everybody know Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant missed over 14,800 shots. He 
He missed more NBA shots than everybody. But when he officially made the game winner, that's all we remember. So when I finally got my own rebound and laid my laid the ball back in, I finally won. So I had a mindset of a winner, of a champion. So I'm challenging you, are you a teacher, a father, a mother, an educator? What's your mindset? I challenge you to make a total commitment to your hopes and the dreams. It should look different than everybody else's because we're individuals. When I was a young boy, I said, I'm going to be totally committed to be better than my mom was because I wasn't embarrassed that she had a job, but I knew it was more to offer. So I challenged everything that I had to do to be better than my environment. And that's what I did. I made a total commitment to my life. And I challenged people to make a total commitment to their life. Sometimes when I'm on stages, people say, how did you get there? I said, I made a total commitment to my life. And the next question I get is, did you go pro? And I smile and I say, yes, I did go pro. And the next question I get is, they say, who did you play for? And then I smile again. I said, I went pro, but I never said I went pro in football. I went pro in something else other than football. Because when life happened, I wasn't good enough to go to the league. I had to pivot and prevail in something else. So I went pro in oil and gas. So what do you go pro in? When they see an African-American or somebody that looks like something they think they can do, that's all we can do, I proved them wrong and I became something else because my mindset was something different. I was totally committed to something else that ain't never been done before. I live in a city that's known for oil and gas. Everybody that got a million dollars in my community made it in oil and gas. And the football players that come back that made it to the league, they're not the richest guys in town because our community is made off something else. So do you have a poor mindset? a rich mindset or a wealthy mindset. It starts with you. What are you committed to? What is that uncomfortable feeling in your heart that tells you you haven't gave maximum effort? How many of you have given the opportunity and you burnt that bridge? How many of you just walked away from a job that you knew was taking care of your family but you felt like you deserved more and you cheated the process? How many of you got that dog or that hunger in you and you feel like you ain't got your opportunity yet? Sometimes you're good enough, it's just not your time. It's just not your season. A lot of times when people see me on stages or see that I may have an opportunity that they don't have, they ask me, how did I do it? The how is I just kept on praying and kept on taking them shots till my number was called. The O is I have to overcome obstacle after obstacle and never give up on my dream. The W is my why. My why was I wanted to be more than my mother. I wanted to be more than my father. That was the driving force because people knew where I came from once they knew the backstory of my story. And my why was that was my mama, but I'm her son. And that's what I was able to accomplish. So when you see the Tiki Factor brand, it's just not me, it's my mama. It's just not me, it's my father. I'm everything because of where I came from, who I came from, the environment I was around. A lot of you from different parts around the world, Sean's from New York. When you hear him speak, you're going to hear New York come out of him. Wherever you're from, is going to hear that culture come out of you. Sometimes people say, Tiki, you sound white. Well, maybe it's because that's where I, I'm raised. That's where I'm from. I might have a little country in me, but it don't make my story or me weak. It's just the environment that I was around. It was my culture. So I made a total commitment to be the best man that I can be with the environment that I was around. I choose to be a champion. I choose to be a factor. I choose to be great. And it wasn't easy, but the reason I'm on this call with Sean and he believed that I'm a mover is because I didn't cheat the process. I, I didn't cheat the steps. So he asked me, how did I get from A to Z? 
I didn't cheat it. I can tell them every step because it wasn't handed to me. Now I'm 43 years old. I only cried one time myself to sleep when I was 17, laying in a jail cell accused of a crime that I didn't do. I cried that night and the next day I got to work on proving my innocence. I got to work and proving that I'm bigger than the sums of my environment. I told a jailer one time, I said, jailer, when I get out of here, I'm going to go to college. He laughed at me. I just went back there recently. He's the, still the same jailer, and we filming a documentary. I said, I told you. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I seen your posters around town. You're running for city councilman. I told you. That's the work. I didn't cheat the process. He said, did you ever graduate college? I said, I did it three times. I got my bachelor's, I got my master's, and I got my PhD because I didn't cheat the process. I made a total commitment to my life. I'm telling you to make a total commitment to your life. The reason I'm on this call because I'm a player now. I realized I just didn't want to be a player on the field of athletics. I want to be a player in life. The reason the doors are opening up to me now is not because I cheated the game. It's because I played the game and I won. When nobody else was believing in me, I believed in myself. It starts with you. Like Michael Jordan saying that Gatorade commercial, is it in you? Is it in you? It's in me, and I'm the Tiki Factor, and I made a total commitment to my life, and I challenge you to do the same. That thing that's that uncomfortable feeling in your chest, when you, 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 you know you're doing something, you didn't give all your effort, or somebody stole your girlfriend, or somebody stole your wife, like I wasn't a very good husband, don't blame that guy because you treated her wrong. Blame yourself. If some guy comes in and take your job that's only been there a short period of time, don't blame him for coming in and performing at a high level. Blame yourself because you didn't give maximum opportunity or maximum effort when you had, had the opportunity. If you're in that league and somebody, a rookie, comes in to take your job, don't be mad at him because they say, oh, you got to play him because he was a high draft pick. No, he came in because he gave maximum effort and the door was open. And the team seen that, so we need to drop somebody because such and such play has dropped off. When I'm in this game, you ain't gonna never see me drop off because I'm gonna give maximum effort. If somebody beat me, it's because his effort was it wasn't. It's not gonna be because of effort. He was just better. So that's my time. I'm the Tiki Factor. I hope you enjoyed it. Yo, Tiki, you killed it, kid. Yeah, you got you got me over here smiling, Tiki. <laughs> You got me, yeah, I'm like, yo, keep going. You got me pumped. <laughs> oh, man, I appreciate it, man. I started sweating a little bit, man. It's so but that's, just, that's just one acronym. That's just the T and the Tiki Factor, total commitment. I challenge people to make a total commitment to your hopes and your dreams. Be totally committed to what's important to you. And nobody knows that but you. Nobody knows it but you. Mm-hmm. Nah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, you dropped so many gems tonight, and um, I, I, I was so happy to hear you speak. It really, you know, once the passion started kicking in, and you started talking yeah. to Sean Prez talk, like, yo, if a rookie uh -huh. come on the team and take your spot, don't be mad at him, be mad at yourself. He can't yeah. take over maximum effort. I'm like, yo, he talking that old Prez talk right there. Yeah, you oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't be mad, man. You know, it, it's like, it, it's effort, man. And anything that I do, I don't think I can be beat because I've been battle tested. I'm that cat that went to war and came back with the dents in the heaven. I didn't get killed. I might've got shot, but I survived. So I don't think speaking on stage or doing community work or trying to uh, inspire the next generation, that's not work. That's a blessing you know, to stand to help, you know, and the reason I got into motivation, it really wasn't about money in the beginning. It was about that I had enough to give back. What would you do when money wasn't an option? I'll speak. I'll share my story. Maybe I can inspire somebody else to do something. So that was the whole motivation of becoming a speaker. And at the beginning, shoot, nobody would book you for free. Like, hey, man, I want to come speak at your school. What's your story? You didn't know how to sell yourself. But as you start growing and developing and building a brand, then people started calling you. 
So that's pretty much it. Nah, man, I'm, I'm going to tell you real talk. Um, for anybody who's on this live who's not following Tiki, please go ahead and hit that um, follow button. This dude is a powerful speaker. He has an incredible story. And, you know, Tiki, you, you are, you why I do what I do. And what I mean by that is, coming from my background, I'm big on entrepreneurship. I'm big on wealth building. But mm. wealth is not just about dollars in the bank, right? Right. It, 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 it's, it's that life that you live. Right. Is it wealthy? Is it healthy? Or are, are you somebody who's taking what God gave you, even mm -hmm. if it if it if it started off as lemons and you right. were able to turn it into lemonade, now are you willing to pour it and right. share that lemonade with the rest of the world? And that's what you're doing. And that's why I think that, you know, for what I do week over week and and, mm -hmm. and connecting with fellow movers like yourself who are uh, and, and, and I'm going to choose my words wisely. You know, right. this thing, a lot of people are selling entrepreneurship, wealth building. God bless right. you. I'm all about that. Real talk. Right. But, right. but I know you got to first believe in you. You got to first right. believe that, yo, when, when, when I'm walking through hell, I, I got right. to shake hands with the devil before right. I can get up out of here. And, and 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 go ahead and start being that angel that God made me to be. And right. when, I, when I hear stories like yours, you literally walk through hell. Um, yeah. And a lot of people I say go follow Tiki because he got one hell of a story. Um, mm -hmm. But but the fact that you were able to come out on the other side, build wealth for yourself, and now you're sharing and inspiring people and letting people mm -hmm. know that it's okay. To start from the right. bottom, it's right. okay. So, so that's why I love having fellow movers like yourself to share their story 